All right, so here we are. <clears throat> the ancient Africans understood death, okay? <clears throat> and what they were trying to teach and what they were trying to let you understand is how to transition this energy beyond this physical realm once your energy leaves the physical body, okay? The physical body is not meant to move forward. It's, it's, it's going to decay. It's going to, to decrease. And it's going to get weaker as the older you get. We all understand this. This is called life, okay? Death is a part of life. Death will happen for all of us. We will all, this body will leave. We will, our energy will leave this body, okay? And the ancient African ancestors were trying to teach, you know, spiritually teach how to keep moving in existence, okay? So they were transitioning. So your energy can transition to the next life or your next reality or the next physical realm so that you won't have to reincarnate and come back to this earth, okay? You won't have to reincarnate and come back. The ancient Africans understood this, that you will transition. Your energy on the inside, your spirit does not die. Your physical body will die and, and you will leave that physical body when it's no longer able to hold your energy. When this physical body, this matter that was created is no longer able to hold your energy, you will transition. That's why we don't know what day we're gonna die. Everyone has a start date and then there's a dash in, in between on your headstone and your tombstone and then there's a date that you're gonna die. No one knows what that date is, okay? So what you have to do is your energy is gonna transition, all right? No one knows when your body is going to break down. No one knows when you're going to do something crazy like, you know, uh, risky or jumping out of a plane or bungee jumping or doing something stupid, a car crash. No one knows when that's going to occur. OK, so. If your physical body is no longer able to keep your energy, your energy will transition. That means your car spirit what the ancient Africans understood will transition into the next life. Okay. The next reality, your next existence, or it will come back here through reincarnation on earth. That's why Tupac said, you know, all the time, my only fear of death is coming back reincarnated. I never understood what he was talking about when he was saying that back then. It didn't dawn on me that he was talking about an ancient African spirituality. OK, Tupac was, you know, learned in this, you know, his mother, Feeney, taught him about African spirituality and African history. So he understood his his people. You know, he understood himself, you know, before he got caught up in all the materialism and his lower thinking, his lower self. He got caught up in his lower self and then he ultimately died and his spirit transitioned and moved on. But this is what the ancient Africans understood. So the death and transition you see on the top left. The papyrus of Annie and how Annie in the Book of the Dead, uh, if you if you buy the Book of the Dead, you'll see this papyrus of Annie. These are on the coffin text in Egypt. These reliefs. This is a picture of the relief that's on the coffin text in ancient Egypt, which is in Kemet. OK, Kemet, ancient Egypt, same thing. All right. So Annie is going through and he's having his heart weighed on, you know, the balancing scales by Anubis against a feather. And then you see uh, Thoth is writing down the history of everything that's going on. And then the uh, metal netter gods are above him, you know, taking a look at the whole process. And he's going through death. All right. And he's going through the process. And this is what the Bible plagiarized again with Psalms 23. You know, they repeat Psalms 23 in church all the time. And, you know, it says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. You see death on the left side. I will fear no evil. He's not afraid. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. So again, biblical plagiarism of African, uh, ancient African traditions that they already understood these aspects. You see, you know, the rod and the staff, you know, that, you know, King Tut is holding. The mummy, you know, that they, you know, holding right there. The transition that they have of the afterlife and death. So they took that from ancient African Kemet and wrote it in that Bible. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And preachers preach on it all the time. You know what I'm saying? They say these things at 
funerals and all of this stuff like that. They already they recite Psalms 23 at funerals all the time. So again, biblical plagiarism, mixing in African, you know, Egyptian, you know, comedic uh philosophies and understanding of African spirituality. All right. And all it was was transcending, transcending rather to the next level of existence, your energy, your spirit transitioning. All right. Which all comes down to this. Reincarnation. Reincarnation. OK, so again, you see the process in which you're coming back to this earth. And let's see if we uh, you know, make sure I stay on my notes so I don't miss anything. So in this life, you know, there's energy, like you said, it resides in you. And if you haven't reached a spiritual level, if you haven't achieved a spiritual level, you will keep reincarnating back to earth, you know, until you figure out your spirituality and you're able to reach your spiritual capacity to reach the level you need to transcend to the next physical realm of existence. You know, that's just what they understood it to be. You know, your purpose here on life is to conquer this physical realm and to be able to move forward to the next level. It's almost like, uh, let's see, hold on a second. I'm going I'm to go to it. Let me talk about it real quick. I like to liken this to a video game. And a lot of us played video games growing up. You know, you couldn't really get past, you know, the next level on Mario Brothers. You know, you kept getting, you know, squashed by that little uh, mushroom or, you know, on Donkey Kong, you got hit with a barrel or something like that, and you're not able to reach the next level. So you, you, you have another life. It comes back and you have another Mario life and you start the process all over again and you keep trying to go. You keep trying to go, you know, to the next level till you reach the Donkey Kong at the top and then you fight the Donkey Kong. The first time you get killed, then you come back and you got another life. You know what I'm saying? You keep putting quarters in there. Why do you think they make these things? You know what I'm saying? They created these things out of concepts and ideas from the ancient Africans. OK, this concept of reincarnation has been on the earth for centuries. All right. Why do you think they keep reincarnating things and they keep putting things in your face like video games? You know what I'm saying? Like movies to remind you of these things. But you have no clue what it is. You have no clue what it is. And it's right in front of your face the whole time you play video games and in order for you to get to the next level of existence you have to conquer that level in order to go to the next level in the video game okay that's what i like to liken it to you know that's the only way i can understand it or make sense of it you know reincarnation you know tupac said it again like i said tupac said you know the only fear of death he has was coming back reincarnated that's his only mental he didn't want to come back here to earth because he understood reincarnation he understood what the ancient Africans understood spiritually about energy transferring and transitioning. You know what I'm saying? Energy never dies. Your spirit never dies. Your spirit moves on. It's either going to go to the next level of existence or it's going to come back here. All right. There is no heaven that is going to go to. There is no hell. You're not going to burn in no hell. This book preaches about a hell and a heaven, but no one can prove it ever exists. No one has ever died and came back you know, out of the grave and said, yeah, there's a heaven, y'all. Y'all better better be getting yourself together. No, you got to know Jesus to get there. Or some, nobody never came back and said, there's a hell. You got to be scared of this place. Don't know that. No one ever came out of the grave and told you that. No one has ever seen with their own two eyes, these two eyes, a heaven or a hell. The only place you ever get a concept of a heaven or a hell is in this book. The only place. OK, so. Your spirit, ancient Africans understood that your spirit is energy. They understood that we are energetic beings and your energy will transition. And they understood how you came into this world through a thought from your father and mother having sex. The energy from a thought flowed down the spine of your father and caused him to have an erection. And the energy from the thought of your mother caused her vagina to get wet. And those two energies came together, okay? Those energies came together in order to have sex and then created a baby, okay? A baby was developed from the egg being fertilized, the sperm fertilized the egg, 
And then nine months later, a baby came through the mother's womb. That's why each one of us has an umbilical cord, okay? So let me show you something, reincarnation. Hold on a second, let me show you this. Go back, let's go to my desktop real quick. The world birth and death rates. All right, this is the 2011 estimated, okay? The birth rate is on the left, the death rate is on the right. All right, so as you can see here, uh, the many numbers of death as opposed to the number of birth rates within a year, okay? So it's, the birth rates are almost twice as, twice as much as the death rate. So people are dying, you know, at, uh, let's see, there are nearly two people die each second every day. You know, and in that same time, there's four births that happen at the same time that there are two people that have died. OK, so here you have, you know, eight deaths uh, per a thousand out a thousand population as opposed to 19 births. OK, so five point uh, fifty five point three million people die each year as opposed to one hundred and thirty one point four million births per year. So it's twice as much uh, births being born for the year as opposed to death happening. So energy is being, you know, transferred and people are dying, okay? But then at the same time, you have these births that are coming in as twice as much, okay? So what is that relation? I mean, is there a coincidence, okay, that you have twice as many births coming back to this earth as opposed to deaths? So what does that tell you? That tells you that those spirits, those energies, they have to come back. Those energies have to come back. And this is what the ancient Africans understood. Those energies coming back. They understood this to the life, okay? So here you see the biblical plagiarism, once again, of this process, all right? It says in John 14, 6, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Again, you see in the papyrus of Annie, there's Horus presenting, you know, Annie to his father, Osar, Osar, which the Greeks call Osiris. And Osiris is represented with the Jed pillar, the Jed pillar right here that you see right, right next to the Unk. The Unk is representation of the woman's womb, which you see off to the right. This is a representation of the woman's womb. The vagina is there, the uterus, the fallopian tubes. This unk represents life and how you are born. If you see down at the bottom here, this is the reliefs from the ancient Africans. Um, the bottom right, you'll notice the Jed pillar, the Jed, which is Osiris. This is your spine, and that's how energy is conducted. You see up to the top right, the spine next to the Jed. This is how energy is conducted and energy sends signals out to your body, to your organs, in order to make them move. That energy makes your organs move, okay, from a thought. So you get, you know, sexual erections and, you know, sexual stimulation through your energy vortexes, you know, going through your spine and sending those signals down your spine to the organs. And this is how life occurs. And this is what ancient Africans understood. Okay, so again, biblical, you know, uh, plagiarism, where they stole it and said, you know, in John 3, 3, Jesus answered, and he was talking to Nicodemus. He answered and said Until, unto him, verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. OK, the kingdom of God is the woman's womb. The kingdom of God is the woman's womb. And this is how you come back reincarnated. Look at these babies faces. Look at these babies faces. They mad. They surprised <laughs> because they're back. They didn't want to come back. Look at their faces. They're back. They reincarnated. You know, so the whole process of your energy moving on, you know, moving forward, you know, they came back to this world. And this is what our ancient Africans understood. OK, they understood this process. So for us. As Af Africans, you know, we need to reconnect with our African spirituality. We need to, you know, 
get beyond the religion, you know, and move out out of that. You know, religion is used to stifle your your uh, mental and to keep you suppressed and keep control of you. You know, that's why it was created. And they stole the uh, the concepts, the ancient African concepts, and they placed them in the book. You know, in parables, they place a little bit here and there, a few verses in parables here and there. They wouldn't give you the complete truth and understanding because once they did, they, they they lost all power. All right. So African spirituality, our ancient ancestors, our African ancient ancestors understood this life process. They understood our connection, our inner divine connection with the creator, with the most high with the most high creator, the consciousness of God, the higher consciousness of God rising to our higher consciousness. They understood this process and they understood how energy, we're, we are energetic beings inhabiting a physical body. They understood this. They understood our spirits, the Ka. They understood all of this and they put it in character, uh, car cartoon or comic book character forms, however you want to call it in order to teach the children, the next generations, how it all interconnects, how we're all interconnected spiritually with nature, the sun, the moon, the stars, the, the, the air in which we breathe, the universe, the earth, all interconnected one with another, animals. You understand what I'm saying? And everything. So Africans, we always had a spiritual nature. We always were peaceful and loving we have a power and they don't want us to know this power they don't want us to reconnect with this spirituality because we have abilities that are far greater and they don't want us to do that okay they want to keep us dumbed down in religion they want us to keep us stupid and fighting each other why do you think there's no peace in religion why do you think there's always conflict and drama in the church why are there's always conflict and you know atrocities with islam you know what I'm saying? Why are there's always, I mean, you got some good things that happen with some people who trying to practice it, you know what I'm saying, uh, peacefully. You know, I ain't going to say all of them, but there's a large majority. There is a large majority, and I'm pretty sure you have experienced this too. If you went into religion, you've experienced some of these, the large majority of people do not behave the way loving and caring and all of that stuff like that, like they put in the book. They, they don't they don't act that way. They act totally opposite of that. Okay? They're hypocritical in their ways. They want to do other things, but that's just off on another tangent. But um, like I said, the African spirituality, I just wanted to teach you this and show you, you know, uh what we understood as African people, you know, and how we interconnected with God spiritually. God is within us, we are within God, we are one with God, it's inseparable. You know, not like religion. Religion teaches you that God is in the sky, in heaven, you know, separate from man. And you have to die in order to see God and this, that, and the third. Well, spirituality, African spirituality knows that you're already connected with God. There is no disconnect with God. There is an inner connection. Okay. So just want to teach you that, you guys that hopefully you learned something. Hopefully you enjoyed this message. Um, Hopefully you uh, got something out of it. Maybe you can, you know, teach your kids or something like that or share a video or however you want to do it. It's up to you. Um, but I wanted to put that out there and, you know, give this lecture an understanding. Like I said before, you know, the truth is out there. If you seek it, you'll find, it. you know what I'm saying? And once you find it, you read it, you'll free your mind from the matrix. OK, once you free your mind, you know, you'll become free. So until next time, I'll say. Love and light. Peace.